Hi, Assalamualaikum and good morning. Thank you, Hong Leong and Bursa Saham Malaysia for inviting me uh, to this talk. So uh, after hearing all the panelists today, I think uh, uh, my TV deserves a bit of introduction. And among the platform operators in Malaysia, I think we are the newest of the lot. Um, so my presentation today would uh, actually encompasses two areas, basically the initiative that the government has taken for my TV and as well as how my TV is looking for the future so in terms of our product and services so I still believe that the future is still TV it's just that it's not how we used to know it like how it was when we were uh, 10 or 20 years before and uh, just to highlight on the Malaysian government's uh, migration plan as the initial initiative for my TV <coughs> so back in uh, 2007-2009, the technical standards were produced, were established uh, for the digital terrestrial television for Malaysia. And uh, within it, you can see the type of services that has already been uh, determined to be launched in Malaysia, which includes HDTV, uh, enhanced TV, standard TV, as well as uh, HBBTV, which is the hybrid broadcast broadband TV, as well as uh, digital radio services. This was later enhanced in the RMK11, the 10th Malaysian National Plan, uh, uh, considering MyTV or the National uh, Digital Terrestrial Television Platform as the, as the content, uh, digital content uh, instigator or, or enhancer for Malaysia. And uh, it's, it's designed to be uh, a platform, a single platform to enable multiple contents and through a tender process, uh, in 2014, we were, Pucha Spangat was uh, se uh, selected as the national operator for DTD services. Initially, MyTV was tasked to migrate the analog TV services into digital. So, this is our network, which uh, involved the whole centralized integrated infrastructure. And uh, moving on from 2020, we are supposed to transform the national broadcasting industry to digitization with the aim of improving the living standards as well as the, uh, the uh, aggregation and also uh, enabling new digital contents onto the platform. Talking a bit about uh, the concession period is for 30 years from 2014 up to 2044. And looking at the network, we basically aggregate all the digital content from local free-to-air broadcasters. Currently, we have Media Prima, RTM, TV Al Hijra, Bernama, um, as well as CJ Wow Shop and Astro Go Shop on our platform. And we send it to, to our two main facilities, uh, one in Cyberjaya and one in Shahalam. The one in Shahalam is become, becoming the, became, become the backup facility for uh, Infra. And we have two ecosystems uh, that, that actually uh, transmit uh, the signaling of uh, DTT. One is using the terrestrial transmission method. And we have 44 sites uh, in Malaysia uh, covering East and West Malaysia. And that, through that, we have a 95.3% population coverage uh, via terrestrial. And on top of that, we have a DTH system as well to complement the uh, population coverage, uh, especially in uh, challenging terrains such as uh, Cameron Highlands or Gunung Kinabalu. So we use DTH ecosystem uh, to cover all the blind spots. And these are our stakeholders. Uh, we are partnering with TM to provide uh, our linkage services uh, on the contribution and distribution network. Uh, we're also using the transmission sites that were used in analog transmission because uh, it has proven over the years that analog transmission has been effective. So we continue to use the same sites for digital. Um, and also we use the speedcast to provide our secondary service for DTH. And we are also partnering with a conditional access provider to provide encryption on the TV services. Uh, this is provided by Astro, uh, Ireto, sorry. And we have two kind of set-up boxes currently deployed in Malaysia. Uh, 
which is the zapper boxes, the basic DTT boxes, as well as a DTH setup boxes. We have uh, we have deployed about two million setup boxes uh, as part of our CSR uh, to to boost the migration and take up rate of uh, digital TV in Malaysia. Um, and also, I would like to talk now about the services of uh, DTT and also the business ecosystem and how MyTV is actually in between all of this. We are licensed uh, through network service provider and network facilities provider. This is different from Astro and Hip TV, uh, whereby because these two players, they are also NSP and NFP licensees, but they also have an additional license to produce content. But MyTV, we don't. So uh, we are purely uh, a platform operator, something like Mesa, if you could relate to it locally. We enable services on our platform, and we are leveraging on DVB, Digital Video Broadcast T2 services, T2 technology, and S2 technology. And uh, this is in accordance to the uh, DTT uh, technical codes that has been uh, developed globally and locally. And these services are later on offered to broadcasters. And uh, through it, you, we could uh, actually enable services similar to Astro or Hip TV, or HBP, uh, HDTV, HBBTV, or even pay TV services as well. And we could also work with other CMA licenses to produce uh, third party products, uh, something like a, for mobile reception or for 5G broadcast. So we can enable those through my TV network. So typically, the product or services that we churn out uh, requires collaboration with broadcasters. So we work closely with uh, partners like RTM and Media Prima to enable new services other than linear TV. So um, for example, RTM and Media Prima currently uh, uses hybrid broadcast broadband TV as their interactive services to complement their linear TV services. And through HBBTV, you could, uh, it's something similar to OTT services, but it's actually uh, packed to the actual uh, DTT transmission. Uh, hence, the coverage of it uh, is based on my earlier slide, covers the whole uh, population coverage of Malaysia. Nielsen has stated that the uh, digital platform continues to grow in importance and uh, traditional media, TV, radio, and outdoor advertising still dominates uh, with at least 70% reach across uh, Malaysia, particularly uh, age 15 and above. And hence, free-to-air TV is still relevant to reach for mass marketing. I would like to share with you the product and services that we offer currently. Uh, this is free-to-air linear services with offering of standard definition, high definition, as well as digital radio services and interactive services of HBBTV, hybrid broadcast broadband television. And the pricing for, for our services is actually a mandated uh, access pricing by MCMC and we, it's around 6 to 8 million per service or per channel. Moving on from 2020 onwards, we're looking at a unique proposition to the market. Um, some might feel that the carriage fee that we are offering is slightly a bit high. So, and uh, we also like to see ourselves as an incubator to encourage new content producers to come on board to leverage on our network. So we're looking at uh, offering a bouquet services, whereby it's uh, something of a belting or segmented program. So for example, for a portion of um, say a fraction of a price, you could have a certain hours on our network so that you could actually be a broadcaster without uh, occupying the whole 24-7 uh, access to the network at a fraction of a price. So we think this is a quite an interesting offering to Malaysians or to content producers because uh, it's actually a stepping stone from them to, to become a full-blown broadcast operator. And on top of that, we are also looking to develop pay TV linear services uh, through our network. Uh, we can enable uh, encryption uh, and also pay TV services in SD, HD format or even UHD uh, in the future. 
and also to also look into OTT as an enabler of services. So we are working closely with uh, broadcast operators, uh, TV manufacturers, uh, device manufacturers, uh, as well as uh, OTT uh, uh, producers uh, to work on the solutions uh, uh, that are suitable for broadcasters in general. Also, we are looking at beyond TV as, as the, the, our focus because uh, with our set of box distribution and uh, with all smart TVs uh, that is being manufactured after 2017, which has DVB-T2 tuners inside, we are looking at other devices to basically bring my field view to the next level, basically the big screens and small screens. Um, with the recent uh, study from Nielsen, I think there is a strong drive to look into the, the mobile devices uh, and for my TV to look into mobile reception uh, to actually expand the services beyond the services that we have on RF. So we have developed uh, a, a uh, mobile recept USB DTT dongles uh, to work with handphones, particularly on on um, on on uh, Android-based phones. Just by latching on a dongle, you can start receiving uh, my freeview services, or even better, through OTT, you could download an app and actually uh, view my freeview services on it. Please disregard the, the <laughs> pricing rate. This is <laughs> that's not the actual pricing rate. And also on smart TV and IDTV, we are looking at uh, enabling it through pay, uh, enabling pay TV services as well as HBB TV premium services just by buying a dongle. So viewers can actually uh, buy our dongles and actually use them to watch additional service on top of the My Free View services that we offer up for free. So this is. Uh, currently in development, uh, we, are, we are also working closely with the TV manufacturers as well as our uh, technical partners uh, overseas to look into this. And uh, we are looking to launch this uh, with, within 2020 to 2021. Um, we're looking for suitable broadcasters to, to work with us to provide these unique services uh, to the market. So, uh, relating back to our commitment to MCMC, uh, we have currently three muxes uh, with the capacity of 90 megabits per second using the H.264 codec now, <coughs> which covers about 95.3 co population coverage on DTT and 100% on DTH. And we have SD and HD uh, offering linear, free-to-air linear TV services as well as HBBTV. And by 2023, we, we are planning to add two more muxes uh, to support uh, new services, hopefully, within these three years. And with these two marks, we'll bring in a new uh, generation co codex, uh, which is the HEVC, H265, uh, whereby we can look into uh, more bandwidth efficiency, as well as look into the mobile reception, uh, be it via 5G broadcast or even DVB-T2 uh, as the... the uh, the transmission protocol and hopefully by 2023 or as well we could look into enabling UHD services as well as premium services on HBB TV and OTT and by 2027 uh, we would have all five maxes uh, with the new technology and further on by 2038 uh, we are allocated about eight maxes uh, with a total capacity of a uh, predicted 360 megabits per second and um, an assortment of uh, services to go with it. So, thank you very much. Uh, that will be me, Mazlam Hadi, from my TV Broadcasting. Uh, what will happen to my TV platform once it reaches uh, uh, fully a participation of broadcaster? Is it uh, the user uh, need to upgrade their box? or my tv will uh, will do it automatically from from your side um well the bosses that we have all have uh, dvbt2 tuners as well as all the smart tv and IDTV available in the market so we are still using the dvbt2 as the main uh, transmission protocol so there's no need for you to change uh, to a new set if the services expands beyond uh, what we have now 
but for interactive services, then we might look into uh, introducing new devices, you know, like dongles, like I mentioned earlier, dongles, so that would need new devices to, to enable those services, as well as like uh, for OTT and HBBTV. Those devices are pretty uh, tailored to suit the, the uh, middleware that's needed to deliver these services.